Autonomous driving is a big technological challenge, probably the biggest of our generation. This is a Tesla. It comes with a feature known as autopilot, and Elon Musk says in the future, it'll have a feature called full self-driving. Several other cars being sold today also come with assisted driving technology, which still requires someone behind the wheel. But new vehicles that won't have anyone in the driver's seat are getting closer to production. Startups Waymo, Cruise, Too Simple, and Aurora are already testing driverless tech on some public roads across America. It's going to move quickly. We'll start to see this move from prototypes to actually scaling products into the world. We see us becoming fully driverless in 2024. As they invest billions in R&D and sign multi-billion dollar deals, their valuations have soared and Too Simple has gone public. They're pitching a future where people won't even own cars. Younger generations won't even think about owning cars. And some jobs will no longer exist. We fundamentally believe that every trucker will be able to retire as a trucker. But first of all, they need to convince governments and the public that their technology is safe. You're limiting your potential if consumers are not comfortable getting into your vehicle and taking a ride. So could these startups make driving a thing of the past? Tesla has been working on making its vehicles autonomous since around 2016 and said it planned to have self-driving cars on the road by 2020. And sometimes I'm not on time, <laughs> but I get it done. For now, experts say these cars have what they call level two autonomy. It is a level two system where they're saying that the driver has to be there, they have to pay attention, they're counting on them. What does that mean? Well, it's a scale used by auto engineers and it starts at zero. Which means you know, kind of a 1950s car with no automation at all. And goes up to level five. Basically, when the car can do everything anywhere. You can drop it off in um, Afghanistan today and it'll be able to operate without maps by itself. Instead of releasing vehicles and working towards autonomy, these top startups want to roll them out directly at level four autonomy, which is where the car doesn't need a driver as long as it's preloaded with information about its surroundings, like maps and directions. And we just simply think level four is the goal for any domain. Some companies in the US and Asia, like Baidu, AutoX, and Didi, say they've reached level four in some vehicles, though none have rolled them out at commercial scale. But some are getting close. Waymo and Cruise have piloted a fleet of robo-taxis in some ring-fenced areas around the U.S. Think ride-hailing without the driver. Like this, the Waymo One. We're the only company that has a fully autonomous ride-hailing service available to the public today in the Phoenix metro area. In late 2020, Waymo began removing support drivers from its vehicles after its cars racked up some 20 million miles on public roads, gathering troves of data for its algorithms. The car shows up completely empty. They take a ride from point A to point B. That's one of the ways you make this real, is you launch a service in the city and you see if customers will actually adopt a service and use it. Waymo started as a Google project in 2009 and now has a $30 billion valuation, and Alphabet, Google's parent, as a majority shareholder. Cruise has roughly the same valuation as Waymo and is owned by GM, with whom it has built an autonomous vehicle from scratch. It has accrued fewer miles than Waymo, some 2 million, in its tests in San Francisco. Miles driven absolutely matters because ultimately the goal is to put this technology on public roads, interacting with other human driven vehicles. So you do need that experience at some point to say, yes, this is not only safe, but it's actually viable. Cruise recently got permission to remove the support driver, but it's yet to carry paying passengers. It plans to begin production of this vehicle, the Origin, in 2023. We spoke with company representatives over the phone who said GM's backing is a strategic advantage. But it's not just cars. Startups are also eyeing trucks. The trucking industry is a massive industry. It's four trillion dollars globally 800 billion dollars in the u.s alone that's the market aurora and too simple are betting on aurora which has received investment from uber says it has a handful of test vehicles out on public roads in the u.s too simple has around 60 autonomous trucks circulating on highways in the southwest with support drivers it was the first driverless company in the u.s to go public getting a roughly 8.5 billion dollar valuation in the u.s alone 60,000 driver shortage this year that will increase to about 160,000 by 2028 based on latest numbers. So it's a very real problem. We don't intend to ever build a car or build a truck. Uh, we work with great companies like Packard and Volvo and Toyota. 
uh, and integrate our technology into their vehicles. I think consumer goods uh, can provide you know, an easier path. You're already kind of simplifying the situations that you would have to deal with. You're driving the same pathway often. You're not going to have pedestrians and cyclists you know, interacting with traffic. But their tech needs to overcome some big challenges before it can be widely adopted. And the more we discover about the challenges, the more we learn about how long this is going to take. And so I think you saw all of industry start to reset expectations. Waymo and others had previously said 2020 was the year that robo-taxis would become commonplace across the U.S. But the coronavirus pandemic and technical hurdles have led to forecasts being pushed back. One issue, these vehicles still don't work well at night or in bad weather. It's not a coincidence that you see companies testing in fair weather places first. When you think about the barriers, it's really engineering barriers. It, it's time. It takes capital. But, uh, but we'll get there. But those are not the only barriers. A Honda Civic right there colliding with the Waymo van. We're being told it was not at fault in this accident. The industry has to address safety concerns, as autonomous cars have been involved in a number of accidents in recent years. After a fatal crash in 2018, where a car's built-in automatic emergency braking system was disabled, Uber had to stop testing autonomous vehicles in Arizona. It continued tests in other cities before selling its unprofitable self-driving car unit to Aurora at the end of 2020. All players in this industry know that they have to deal with a lot of skepticism. There's this suggestion that the technology is presenting new risk or first risk. The reality is the roads have risk. So it, it's not possible to make anything 100% safe, whether it's a toothbrush or an airliner. Um, and so we, we try to make these systems really safe. A recent study found that even if autonomous vehicles cause accidents at half the rate of human drivers, only 37% of Americans would opt in. We've got more forgiveness, we've got more understanding if that happens or is caused by another human driver. I don't think we have that same compassion for a robot that might produce the same result. To show that self-driving vehicles cause very few accidents, Waymo started disclosing all of its crashes and near misses in Arizona, a total of 47 episodes over 2019 and 2020. Because we thought it was really important to start to demonstrate that you insert a fully autonomous vehicle into an ecosystem and there's still human error around the vehicle. Sure, we've got disengagements, we've got miles driven, we've got the number of crashes and we can relate that to human drivers. Um, but that doesn't necessarily make it much easier to kind of say this is safe safer or safe enough. So, so just being able to quantify these things, I think is gonna be, is still a challenge for the industry.